tonight. So um, we're here for the benefit of people, for our, ourselves and for the people who will watch this, and actually a lot of people do watch this. So uh, we'll ask that you start by introducing yourself, state your name, the position on the school board that you're running for, and uh, just give us a brief bio. We've, we've read your voters' pamphlet statements and your filing statements, so we know a little bit about you, but people who will be watching this may be meeting you for the first time. And then we'll ask you about some issues. Um, if there are uh, uh, places you want to draw distinctions between you and your opponent, feel free to do so. Please do so civilly. And if you want to follow up on something an opponent has said, please also do so civilly. So uh, let's get started. Derek, why don't, why don't we ask you to go first, please? Okay. Yeah, so my name is Derek Peterson, and I am running for Portland Public School Board Zone 3. And uh, I was born here in Portland, and I'm um, just excited to have this opportunity to run and be an influence in our community in a different way, uh, especially with our, our youth. Um, what else did you need, need me? Tell us a little bit about uh, how you got here today. What have you done? To, how have you made your living? Uh, what okay. credentials do you bring? What prompted you to run in this race? Yeah, so uh, again, um, I attended Portland State University and I got my degree in administration of justice. Uh, I am a former chief uh, Chief Deputy of Corrections Division in the County Sheriff's Office, where I uh, served the community for close to 36 years. Uh, when did you retire? I retired no November 1st of 2022. Okay. Yeah. And during that time, uh, as Chief, I was responsible for over 400 personnel and had a $30 million budget. So uh, I understand operations of, of different sorts and running staff and, and then uh, budgets as well. What, uh, what caused you, so you're retired now, you could be playing some golf or uh, doing all those jobs <laughs> you put off for the past 30 years while you're, while you're running for this office? <laughs> well, uh, first thing, a lot of people from the community came and talked with me. They are extremely concerned about the school board and making sure that it's stable and, and has a, uh, people in there that really are concerned about the community, concerned about the youth. And a lot of my platform, running for sheriff, as you guys know, uh, it was about the youth and making sure that they were taken care of and especially post-COVID uh, making sure that their mental health needs are being taken care of. There's major issues going on with the higher suicide rates and uh, bullying in school, uh, violence in school, this, uh, gun violence, which one, was one of my tenants uh, running for sheriff. Uh, just making sure we were looking at those kind of things. And so a lot of that, uh, that a lot of things that I was doing and running for sheriff really uh, envelop and, and go alongside running for the Portland School Board. Uh, the other ish, other things that, that come in, in play is I, I've been in education for 25 years and uh, I've been a diversity, equity, inclusion instructor during that time, that whole time. I've taught in some of the uh, local colleges, uh, management and diversity classes, and I'm on the on the on the uh, social sciences board for Portland uh, Community College, helping to shape the the curriculum and making sure the students are getting what they want. Mentoring, um, I've been a coach as well, a, a youth coach. So it's not so far out of my wheelhouse from coming from. Uh, the corrections and the sheriff's office that I'm doing this. So. Okay, great. Uh, Patty, is it Patty? P A T T E, yes. unusual spelling. That so is I just unusual. want to make sure I pronounce <laughs> it correctly. That's correct. Yeah, Patty. so please tell us about yourself and why you're running. Okay, um, well, I was born in San Francisco, but moved around a lot, but ended up here for high school at Lake Oswego High School. Went to Whitman College, got a degree in biology, and spent uh, my first real working year at the Primate Center doing research. And then I quit work, had a family, stayed home for about seven years, had a divorce, had to go back to work. And at the time, I had worked in cooperative preschools with my children and learned I really liked working with children way better than sitting in a lab all by myself. So I got a job as a head teacher in a preschool, cooperative preschool, and took courses at Portland State to get my teaching certificate, 
got a job at um, Robert Gray when it was a K-8 and taught kindergarten and then moved to Metropolitan Learning Center for the next 20 years. Taught first, second, uh, kindergarten, first and second grade. Uh, I actually retired in 2001, so I've been retired a long time. In retirement, I worked at Lutheran Clark College supervising student teachers. That was a very part-time job, but I did it for about 10 years, really enjoyed that, up until COVID, and then I, that stopped. And I also um, was a volunteer docent at the Portland Art Museum. So I've been very involved, even after retirement, with teaching. And the last two years have not been involved, mainly because of COVID. And when, I, actually I heard on the radio that um, there were school board positions opening. And the back of my mind said, oh, school board, that's where the right wing sneaks in. Mm -hmm. So I better get out there. Is that and you? Were you the right wing sneaking in? No, I wasn't. Okay. I didn't want to sneak in. I was afraid they'd sneak in. <laughs> so, so I signed up sort of the last minute. Uh -huh. um, I only, I had to get my application in. Um, and I didn't know anybody else was running. Uh, then I found out that Derek was running and I don't have to worry about the right wing, <laughs> but I am um, uh, getting, I'm excited to be involved with education again. I think this is a good step for me. I'm not able to get down on the floor anymore with those kindergarten kids, but I can certainly sit in a meeting and learn and do research and speak my mind. I'm very concerned about um, diversity and you know at the art museum we had tons of DEI training I don't know if it did any good but <laughs> we had a lot of it and I'm particularly concerned about um, um, LGBTQ rights and what's happening with trans children mm -hmm. I have a non-binary child who works with trans um, students and I'm just learning more and more from them, and I'm, I'm just concerned. Mm -hmm. Want to make sure okay. they are heard. If there is, uh, if you were to be elected to the school board, uh, what would your top priority be? I think probably racial equity in the schools, and making sure all students get a good education, and especially students who need extra help, okay. either homelessness or just having more trouble academically. I just really want to see everybody have an equal chance. Okay. And you'll never have an equal chance, <laughs> but at least help them toward an equal chance. Same question for you, Derek. If you were to be elected, what would your top priority be? There's so many of them. <laughs> just a, a few. When I first got into the business of uh, law enforcement, uh, corrections, I worked for JDH and uh, was really co communicating and uh, supervising the youth there. And what broke my heart is seeing them transition from JDH into the adult system. JDH means juvenile system. Juvenile system. system. Yeah. Uh, so in retirement, I think it gives me an incredible opportunity to work upstream using the, my, my talents and, and uh, the different people that I've come in contact in the community to keep them from getting justice involved. So that's extremely important to me. Uh, of course, equity inclusion is my DNA. I've been d doing that for 25 years. And uh, that's extremely important as we see the landscape changing uh, in our in our world, in our country, and, and it's extremely important that people get a chance and opportunity to be heard and to be honored and respected, and that's that's what I represent. So that's at the one of the things that, at the top okay. of my list. So one of the one of the issues that uh, Portland Public Schools has dealt with, and it's a national issue, is school resource officers, which is a polite name for school police. Yeah. So we decided to take them out of Portland Public Schools. Was that the right decision? I, I want to hear your thinking on school resource officers, whether they should be in schools or not. Well, one thing I come from, for, from the Sheriff's Office, where uh, school resource officers were adored, right? From the students all the way up through faculty and, and, uh, and parents. And 
talking with students in the PPS system, there's a, a litany of, of different directions of, yeah, we care, cared about it, we, we want them there, uh, but then there's a whole host of folks that says, no way, they can't come back in. So uh, there's a lot of miscommunication about what actually happened, what, they, what uh, school resource officers presented and did. I think it's time for a change in how we look at school resource officers, uh, do something that compares to Portland, uh, res the Portland response uh, team that, that is coming in to situations without guns, without uniforms. They're professional, they have uh, training in de-escalation and counseling and giving uh, inserting themselves and making sure that the people get the resources they need. We can bring that kind of element uh, into our schools uh, where it uh, dissipates the anxiety of our students and our staff. So I think that conversation needs to be had and it needs, it needs to be had right now. Students need to be involved in that, that conversation to see what direction we need to go because our safe, our kids' safety is of, of the utmost for me. It's it's a very concerning to see see that not only with shootings going on around the schools, but also the violence that it is taking place in the schools as well. Same question for you, Patty. Should we have school resource officers, and if so, what should they look like? Well, my initial reaction is no. We should not. Um, everything I've read points to does it really help um, to have this resource officers in there and it tends to especially if they get involved with disciplining the children gets into real problems with the school to jail pipeline however I did have a conversation with the superintendent and we, we all did he, he asked wanted to speak to people who are going to uh, trying to be on the school board and he said He's concerned about the shootings that have been going around around the high schools. And that looking at SROs, if they're well trained, said the problem was that after the riots, then uh, some of the officers that were SROs were pulled out, then they got a shortage of officers, and then they started putting officers in that weren't trained, and said they have to be trained especially to be in schools if they're there, so that they're I guess have the same kind of training that a counselor would have. And they do not deal with school discipline. They only deal with safety. So I maybe could be swayed if I was sure that that's the kind of officer that went into the school. What Derek described sounded reasonable, but my feeling right now is no. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we're ready. I don't think we have the officers trained to do it. So uh, when PPS hired Guadalupe Guerrero in 2017, the board told him his primary, his most important task was to close the achievement gap that both of you have touched on between white children and children of color. So how has he done in that endeavor? We'll start with you, Patty. Well, I haven't seen test scores, so I don't know for sure. I know that the vision statement they've put out is pretty amazing. If they can even begin to <laughs> meet that vision statement, they're well, have, 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 have they? You must have some sense of that. You're a scientist and an experienced teacher. What, the vision statement? No, have they? I mean, have, we, we can saying, all write a vision I, statement. I know questions, have, they, I mean, have they looked yeah, up to it in your, in your estimation? I, I don't know. As I said, I have not seen the test scores. I don't know. Uh, how come you haven't seen the test scores? Because I didn't look at them. Okay. <laughs> I didn't ask for them. So you, so haven't, you haven't done your homework? I have not done my homework on that. You're right. Okay. okay. Derek, same question for you. Yeah, we just know that statistically um, black and brown people are, are very underrepresented uh, in our community. And when you talk about schools, the achievement gaps, uh, it's woefully under, it's, it's not acceptable. Uh, the superintendent does have a well laid out plan, which I appreciate. I know that COVID came in and, did, and really uh, knocked that, that vision down uh, and put it back a couple of years. Uh, so I'm very interested. I'm in a wait and see kind of situation where I'm going, well, I wanna see, see these results start to happen. 
uh, soon rather than later. Uh, and so I, I give that a pass to the extent that there were some issues that were out of his control, out of the, the district's control. Um, I'm also concerned that um, as we go, go forward that the way they're testing or getting the results, I'm not sure that that's the right in instrument that when it says it's 10% of the black kid, kids or brown kids are, are not doing well, whatever the percentage is, um, is the testing method or the method they're getting their information from accurate? And so we need to make sure, and that, that's what I would like to make sure is that they're using instruments that are accurate in getting that information. So uh, those are some things I'm, I'm looking at and we'll be pressing uh, the superintendent on to make sure that that happens and, and then seeing if some of those things that he's implementing are gonna shrink that that uh, the, the results down and getting our students in a better position to be productive citizens and be successful. Okay. Yeah, I think the way we test is something we have to look at. If it's all going to be statewide testing, that's going to show us differences between schools, which we probably know are happening for lots of different reasons, not necessarily what's going on in school. And uh, that came up actually when we met with the um, teachers union about if you really don't like testing on the state level, how do you want to evaluate? And so I, I looked some things up um, and there are things um, coming from all sorts of different schools and states about checking on school climate and how exciting, what are the, what's it look like in the schools? Does it look like it's inviting? Look at attendance, are people coming? If they're coming, that means they like school. Um, look at how many extracurricular activities there are that would attract students. Are there um, plays? Are there musical concerts? Are there, is there involvement? Are there academic things going on outside? Chess clubs or um, debate clubs? Um, and then testing of teacher, um, how, how happy teachers are at the school and what do they need, uh, do they have the supplies they need. So looking at each school from a lens not of how it compares necessarily with another school, but how it compares with itself, mm -hmm. how well, it has its individual growth. Yeah. So you, you mentioned the teachers union, uh, which of you got the teachers union endorsement? I don't know. Uh, they I, never I let me you, know. In your in your Rose pamphlet statement, you wrote that you got it, but then it's crossed out. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, someone uh, prematurely, uh, and I don't think it was the teachers union. It was someone else, uh, another union, um, that was saying that they were going to support me, but someone jumped the gun. So I immediately said, "Hey, we got to get that out of there. <laughs> and I don't want to misrepresent at all." So I got a call saying, so, "Yeah, I." So they haven't endorsed these. So, uh, from my understanding, they're not going to endorse in this race, supposedly. So that's okay. that was the word. For okay. That I got. So if each of you could tell us the single endorsement that you would most want, if voters could only know one endorsement, which would it be? Start with you, Derek. One, either one individual, one organization, and don't say there are many. Just give us one. <laughs> How about the Willamette Women Democrats? Okay. Yeah, I think that's huge. Patty? Well, I guess I'd say Willamette Week because that's the one I always look at. Well, you haven't gotten it yet. So. I know, but I said I'd like that. You well, tell us one that you one actually have. Tell us one that you actually oh, have. Oh, I don't have any right now. Okay. I um, came into this at the last minute. I did not get endorsements to go in the voters' pamphlet. I have some friends that are saying they'll endorse me, and I may put it on my website, but I feel kind of silly having just, you know, people's names up there. And, um, I did not do my homework there either, okay. getting endorsements. Okay. So, yeah. right. So I want to ask you, you, you both present very different backgrounds, um, and uh, you could say that your, your long career in education makes you the better candidate. You could say that your more recent career in law enforcement and your work in diversity makes you the better candidate. So let's hear it. Why are you the better candidate? What, what, 
would get you our endorsement. We'll start with you, Patty. Why, why are you better for this board than Derek is? Well, um, I had to say why I was better. I, I think, um, well, like you said, I've, I've taught, but then again, I've only taught primary, and I have great respect for the other grades. I know it's different. I know they have different problems, and so I, I did teach at MLC, so I saw K through 12. I appreciate what, what teachers have, but that also was an exceptional place to be. Um, I, because I'm a teacher, I, I appreciate teachers. I work really hard for the teachers because I think you get good teachers. That's the main thing you need in a school to have a quality school. And I think they need a lot of support, so I guess that means we need a lot of other things besides teachers because we need to support those teachers. I have, um, with my family, I have a connection to the LGBTQ community, and from them I can get a, a lot of information. I also have one of my grandchildren works with the homeless. I feel I can just tap my friends and family for useful um, ideas to present to the board. I have quite a bit of energy. I'm older, but I'm doing very well. I want to use that energy to work with children. I may go back to work with Lewis and Clark again. I have to, to make to figure that out. But I'm actually a long way from actually being in the classroom. So somebody who's closer to that might be better training student teachers. I just, I guess I want it. <laughs> I feel I really want it. It doesn't mean Derek doesn't want it, but um, I, I feel I'm ready for it. I'm ready for a change in my life, and I think I would do a great job. Okay. Derek, uh, you, haven't, you haven't been in a K-12 classroom. You haven't been a teacher, per se, of K-12 students. You, you haven't supervised teachers, so why should, why should we endorse you? Well, uh, you know, working at the sheriff's office is one aspect, and like I, I said, uh, uh, 36 years experience uh, in running budgets and uh, large staffs, and a lot of those things cross over anyway, so I think that's extremely important. Uh, I have a reputation of dealing with people in a fair, calm, consistent way. And that translates over into the school board and being able to understand what the budgets are, what the uh, hiring situations are, and what we need to do to make sure that there's enough money allocated to various funds to make sure that our schools are, are running correctly. So I'll, I'll be able to do that. Um, I have a huge, long history in the community, whether I've been working with uh, Word is Bond or NAACP. And, um, the Portland Safety Action Coalition been doing those kind of things for uh, uh, close to a decade, if not more, dealing with police issues and um, social issues within our city and making sure that we're looking at ways to improve it. And um, I, th I think also having seven, seven, the seven school board members uh, supporting me and actually endorsing me gives me a, a, a big leg up as to their confidence that I can come in day one and uh, be effective, uh, an effective school board member. Uh, yeah, so the other endorsements, I think I said, I've got over 35 endorsements and uh, at this point and, you know, people like Di Diane McKeel and uh, Representative Bynum and uh, ex-senator carter there's just a whole host of folks that i can i could list off and it just shows that that community support i have and that i have been uh i didn't just start yesterday i started years ago and then running uh running for the portland school board i started this probably six months ago if not longer trying to uh, making sure that i was going to be the right fit that i did have the credentials and the ability to come in and be effective, to be, to hold um, people accountable for the outcomes that are coming in, uh, work 
in con congruently in connection with everyone on the board and uh, just bringing, making sure that the, the community understands what's going on uh, and how we as a community can come together and make our system much better, the school board system better. So, In the past year, how many times have you either attended a Portland Public Schools board meeting in person or watched it on Zoom or some other? Meeting? So if I've been going, I've, I've been to three or four so far uh, through that budget session uh, that, that's going on and just making sure that, that I understand what the the real issues are so I didn't want to just come in cold yep. turkey and go hey uh, yeah here I am sh and showing up so I have been uh, going to school board meetings and I'm on the invite list to uh, get the emails when there's there's uh, board sessions going on and so that's at the top of my list to continue to do that so that okay. I understand what. same question for you Ben um, I have not been I, I am on the list though okay. <laughs> they're letting me know um, when they come up I, 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 sure please Okay. Um, so we've seen a 7.5% decline in enrollment in Portland Public Schools overall over the past four years and a 17.3% decline in enrollment for kindergarten classes over the past four years. Uh, at what point does the school district need to begin having a conversation about contraction? There. Now. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> when, you, when you look over a span of time and, and uh, four years is a long, a long time, but I think you've seen uh, a more of an exodus uh, post-COVID to that extent. And you have parents who are, are quite upset uh, about the education and what their kids are being exposed to and, and, and those kind of things. So it's very, very important for those conversations to happen now. Uh, and contraction is is one of those bad words to an extent where you, you don't want to see that, but uh, that's happening. And how do we uh, make sure that the resources are allocated correctly and 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 um, making sure that those communities that are less fortunate are getting the attention they need? And how do we work with those communities that are more fortunate and making sure those are rounded? Uh, kind of sense of, of uh, equality going on. So, yeah, it's now. Okay. Well, yeah, you obviously have to look at it now, uh, but I also remember times when we contracted and then realized well, we shouldn't have contracted. So, um, you can't have a crystal ball to see if it's going to go back up again, but I think it has to be done very carefully. And as Derek said, obviously you have to look at, at making it fair, whichever area you're contracting. I, I do not know actually is it, if it's um, the east or west side that's having the problem. Um, but yeah, definitely time to look at it. Okay, I think we're close to out of time. Maybe you have another question? Here. Yeah, so every cycle we have a fun question that we ask, uh, we ask candidates. Uh, and given the good weather, uh, I want to ask if, uh, if we were to hold a picnic today, what's the one uh, item that you would want to bring? Oh, on a picnic, um, chocolate chip cookies. Excellent. <laughs> I'm going to go with the brisket. <laughs> okay, because uh, I've been known to deliver a mean brisket. People. Uh, come from all over the country and have eaten that and said, hey, this needs to go on. And so that, that would be the deal, is bringing that brisket and serving it up. I, I respect that. <laughs> thank you so much to both of you. Really appreciate okay, it. Thank um, you. One question. Brian, we done?